Caleb Williams, the likely number one overall pick in April's NFL draft, is a victim. Okay, so maybe it isn't quite that deep, but he is the next in a long line of prospects that have been dealt unrealistic expectations after being dubbed a generational prospect way too soon. But also a victim in the way of prospect fatigue, something we see a lot of times with players who, when people have been told for two or three years how great a guy is, people tend to push their weaknesses to the forefront in a way that you don't really see with the newer, fresher prospects. But today, I'm gonna tell you why it doesn't matter that Caleb Williams isn't a generational prospect. Why he still has a legitimate chance to become an elite quarterback at the next level, and why the hate has perhaps gone too far on Caleb Williams. Before we do get started, if you could take just a second, do me a huge favor, please hit that like button. We're kicking off draft season here with this video. It's really important to me that this video does well, and you hitting that like button really does help. It takes just a second. I really appreciate it. And like I said, we're heading into draft season here, so we're gonna have mock drafts, positional rankings, hopefully more videos like this. So make sure you subscribe, come join for the draft season and uh, help me achieve this goal of 100,000 subscribers come April's draft. Um, but let's get into it. I wanna start by breaking down some of the things that do make Caleb Williams a really special prospect, and then we'll talk about some of his weaknesses that maybe have cost him that uh, generational prospect category here. While Caleb's full prospect profile isn't generational, he does have several traits that you might only find three or four times in a decade in NFL prospects. And one of those traits is his arm talent. Caleb has, as what I like to describe, a sea ball hit ball arm, meaning he can truly put the ball wherever he wants, whenever he wants. And with Williams, we're talking about Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers level arm talent, where not only is the raw velocity on his ball exceptional, but he can bring that same velocity with accuracy just as much on the move or off his back foot as he could throwing from a clean platform inside the pocket. And this is valuable for so many reasons. Number one is it opens up the entire field in the passing game, allowing you to launch 60 yard deep shots, 25 yard outs from the opposite hash, or like those vintage Justin Herbert cross field play action rollout shots that Caleb actually puts on tape here against Stanford. When you can legitimately threaten the entire field at any moment, it opens up your playbook the types of routes and player skill sets that you can tap into, but more importantly, it forces defenses to defend you in a certain way that opens up other aspects of your offense, like the run game, the screen game, or the short passing game underneath. Caleb's elite arm talent also compensates for what we're gonna talk about later in the video as his biggest weakness in his inconsistency to play on time and in structure. If he is a tick or a split second late on a read or a decision, the velocity on his throws can compensate for some of, if not all of that time lost. Another underrated aspect of arm strength like this is when Caleb is on time, which is more often than you might think, if he's throwing a screen or a stop route to the outside, the velocity on that fastball can be the difference between the receiver getting the ball, turning around with the opportunity to set up a defender for a missed tackle, or a completion and an incompletion if it means the defender was able to get there in time to get their hands on the ball. People say arm talent is overrated all the time, and while there are certain areas where that is true, boy does it matter. And if you're watching this video, you probably don't need me to tell you that, but what is important is that we know if Caleb Williams really does have elite arm talent. And after watching every single drop back of his final season at USC, I can say undeniably yes. And not just in a, oh, he's got a great arm type of way. His arm talent will be up there with the best quarterbacks of the last decade. And I wanted to highlight this throw against UCLA to showcase that. This is 53 yards, opposite college hash marks where they're wider than NFL hash marks. On the run, in perfect stride. 
This is the type of throw that your opponent makes in Madden, making you need a new controller. But in real life. And saying Caleb Williams has elite arm talent includes his accuracy, by the way. Where many prospects might have the raw arm strength of a Caleb Williams, but will far too often miss the throws he should be hitting, whereas Caleb rarely misses, and when he does, it's almost always on some insane difficulty throws. Like, just last year, Will Levis and Anthony Richardson are great examples of guys with stupid strong arms, but did not have the same accuracy as Caleb Williams especially when moved off of their spot throwing off on the run as well. This also isn't mentioning that Caleb often puts touch and loft on his throws, often changing arm slots as well in the appropriate situations to work the ball around defenders, which is a whole nother aspect of arm talent in terms of knowing when to lay off the fastball and when a changeup or a curveball is the best for the situation. So those are key distinctions here too, beyond, yeah, he's got a rocket launcher attached to his right shoulder blade. It's just a little bit different here with Caleb Williams' arm talent. Before we get to more Caleb, I gotta tell you guys, Underdog Fantasy is changing the game when it comes to Underdog Fantasy. Their pick'em contests are awesome. It increased your interest in any given football game, whether it's bowl season or crummy primetime matchups or games this weekend where everyone's sitting their starters, but you wanna pick that fifth string wide receiver that you think is gonna finally get some action this weekend, well, Underdog's gonna be the place to do that. These lineups, you're only competing against yourself. It's selecting higher or lower on player stats or fantasy points, and you can get payouts up to 20 times your entry. They've even got boosters that go beyond 20 times. I love Underdog. I'm just stoked to continue playing it through the playoffs here, and I think you guys will too. And if you sign up right now using promo code TFG, They'll match up to $100 on your first deposit, so you'll be set up for best ball in the offseason and then more pickums once the new season rolls around. Or maybe you want to do MLB and NBA pickums when the NFL season's over. But they'll match $100 on your first deposit and you'll support my channel in the process. That is promo code TFG at Underdog Fantasy. Just a humble bounty hunter. Another trait that I would describe as elite for Caleb Williams is the combination of his pocket presence, overall instincts when the bullets start flying, and athleticism to make things happen. Pocket presence is always a sticky subject when it comes to quarterback talk because it means something different to everyone, and usually it's a very subjective, you know it when you see it type of thing. There's no stats or analytics to tell you who has the best pocket presence. But the thing with Caleb Williams is he's so unbelievably good in terms of pocket presence, at least by my definition of it, that it's almost an objective strength for him, no matter who's watching him. And my definition of pocket presence, as described on my draft guide, which I might as well plug, is available over on my Patreon if you want to go check that out. But my definition of pocket presence is the quarterback's ability to sense pressure, manipulate the pocket, and know how and when to use their feet to extend plays both inside and outside the pocket. This includes the quarterback's ability to know when pressure isn't there and when to stay in a clean pocket or find avenues to reset the pocket against pressure. In other words, this is the Aaron Rodgers trait. And if you followed Aaron Rodgers' career or just watch an Aaron Rodgers' career highlight reel, you'll see plenty of elite pocket presence. But I'm also showing you countless examples of Caleb Williams showing the same thing right here. And Caleb's pocket decision making, for lack of a better term, to always move to the right spot, whether that's sensing that blindside rusher, escaping pressure, avoiding the rush, but then resetting the pocket when that's available, but also knowing when he has a clean pocket, when he doesn't have to move, where so often we see quarterbacks bail out of clean pockets with a certain clock in their head approach about when they think they have to escape as opposed to just feeling out the play. And this was a trait that I saw in Josh Allen, who was a really polarizing prospect that led to me being much more optimistic about his future outlook than many people. Because having this ability as a crutch 
really, I think, inspires a certain confidence in a quarterback, something to always fall back on that can really help their development throughout the years. But additionally, there's just often no answer to a quarterback with this consistent of an ability to find every possible avenue for a high percentage throw. And this is especially valuable on third downs where even like a third and 14 can somehow feel obtainable for someone like Caleb Williams or down in the red zone, especially where the coverage tightens up and you need to improvise to create open throwing windows and find touchdowns. And what's even more crazy is that Caleb pairs this natural pocket presence with incredible instincts and ability to see the field when he gets out of the pocket. A lot of quarterbacks can get out of the pocket with strong arms, but not everyone can process that backside receiver coming open, a guy gaining a step down the sideline, or see that running back leaking out. This also means keeping his eyes downfield ready to pull the trigger without sacrificing that ability to run when that is the best course of action. He really has the perfect balance with all of this. Now, this out-of-structure talent does come with a trade-off in that he will test his limits and push things and put the ball in harm's way, but that's a natural trade-off with a quarterback that is capable of making all of these sensational plays, and he doesn't do it at a concerning rate. Like, if this is a spectrum of far left being Jameis Winston 30-for-30 YOLO balls all the time to Josh Allen where... It's a little bit more than you'd like putting the ball in harm's way might cost you a game or two on a season. You're worried that it might show up in the playoffs to Patrick Mahomes, who will occasionally have some head scratching throws into double coverage, but for the most part takes good care of the football to Aaron Rodgers, who somehow still made these incredible plays, but almost never put the ball in harm's way. I would drop Caleb Williams like maybe a tick behind Patrick Mahomes on that spectrum. Like, yeah, he'll put the ball in harm's way, but he's pretty smart about it. And that's reflected in like his turnover worthy play percentage that was under 2% his Heisman year. Um, he got it down to about 3.5% um, in his junior year. That's like where Mahomes usually sits is about that 3% mark. Josh Allen's more like a 5% guy, and Jameis, like, you know, even more than that. So. Um, that's kind of where where that lies. And that's all without even really mentioning his athletic ability, which you don't need me to tell you about what athleticism can bring to the table for a quarterback in terms of making these scramble drill situations happen, but also in terms of getting that numbers game advantage in the run game and all that. But it's important to note just how great Caleb's athletic ability is. He's fast. I'd expect him to run in the four fives if he did run the 40. He's explosive and able to burst out of the pocket and hit top speed quickly. He's got a ton of agility, springiness, and rushing creativity to escape defenders in short areas. And he's got good size, bringing contact balance and a bit of power to the table. Every quarterback is a little different in terms of pro comps, and they're always difficult, but physically speaking, he's legitimately some combination of Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and I'll even go as far as saying Lamar Jackson with some of the springiness and creativity he shows as a runner. So, so far in this video, we've compared Caleb Williams to Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. And when you put all of these incredible tools together, you begin to see where some of those generational comments came into play early on. And you might be wondering, well, what's so bad about this guy that caused him to lose that tag of generational prospect? By far, The number one thing you'll hear about Caleb as a criticism is that he does not or cannot play on time, in rhythm, and within the structure of the play. Now, the does not versus cannot are essential distinctions here. Because if your case is that he cannot play on time and in structure, this simply isn't true. There are plenty of examples of Caleb getting the ball out on time, making decisions, taking what the defense is giving him. And I'm showing them to you right now. It's very clear that when he wants to, he can be 
efficient in quick game. He does anticipate early separation within the timing of his throws. He is willing to test tight man coverage windows in the appropriate situations a lot of the time. But if your argument is that he does not play on time, in rhythm, within the structure of the play, then you're absolutely correct. All the time, Caleb will pass up the throw that he should make, looking to go hunting for a bigger play, either within his progressions or later on in scramble drill. So to me at least, it isn't so much that he can't operate quickly and on time, it's that knowing that he's got all of these tools and ability to go big game hunting in his back pocket, it's that a lot of the time he's choosing not to. And while it might sound like a positive that he's always making these incredible explosive plays happen, as amazing as he is, even at USC, he did get himself in trouble quite a bit, maybe passing up on that six yard completion, looking for a bigger play. And it'll be even harder to get away with this against NFL competition. And while I've been hyping up Caleb in this video, I'd be lying if I said that this isn't a legitimate concern for his NFL outlook, and that this isn't by far the reason I agree that Caleb Williams is not a generational prospect. And with all that said, Caleb's coaching and his own ability to develop the right situational balance between when to trust the system and let the structure of the offense do the work versus when it's situationally okay to be the hero and look for these bigger plays is going to be a critical variable in terms of just how great of a quarterback he can become. And this very point, by the way, of taking what the defense gives you in the right situations and finding that balance is eerily familiar to what we would have said about a young Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen who have taken their learning curves and developed significantly through two or three years of development in the league. And it's important to remember that Caleb Williams is just 21 years old. The quarterback he's going to be in 2026 and beyond is likely to look a lot different than the quarterback we're watching right now at USC. On top of that, Look, this criticism of him not playing in structure is overwhelmingly related to him passing up those more underneath or gimme type of throws. And what shouldn't be construed here is that Caleb is some first read quarterback who can't process coverages, doesn't get from one to two to three in his progression, or again, that he can't play within structure at all. And I want to break down some examples of some really good NFL level dropbacks that show that Caleb Williams is not some dumb quarterback that only wants to play backyard football. Let's break that down. Perfect example here against UCLA, backed up on his own end zone, so he knows he's got to get rid of this ball quickly. USC's got a basic spacing concept on the single ISO wide receiver side here in a trips formation. He's going to sit into that space. Running back's going to leak into this space. And Caleb will have the option to read out the leverage of these defenders. On the backside here, we've got a squat, a squat, and this backside dig threatening this intermediate space of the defense. Now, from UCLA's perspective, Caleb knows this is likely to be cover three where in college, 99% of the time with the wider hashes, these teams are going to treat uh, the beginning of the field side of the formation in a trips look like this with these three wide receivers out here, hence the trips. They're going to treat this right here as the middle of the field as opposed to the middle of the center um, of the offensive line, obviously, had the offense been maybe at midfield here. So that means this safety right here is likely to be rotating into a cover three cover three and then probably cover three from this player right here as sees the other corner or it could be um, a lot of times they'll do like a three cloud situation where this guy will drop deep and this guy will sit into the flat so caleb knows we are putting a lot of pressure on this guy right here to cut off this backside dig and as we let this thing play out, reads out front side, gets to his backside, boom, on the money. Backside dig is right there 
on time, second read, in structure, perfect execution from Caleb Williams. This next play is big time because it's actually Caleb recognizing a rotational coverage from Utah. Utah is showing pre-snap single high, right? Kind of what we talked about. The field side of the play here um, is oftentimes going to be treated as the middle of the field with these wider hashes. So this is a pre-snap, probably cover one look here, maybe cover three. But Utah is actually going to roll this into a cover two with these guys playing underneath here. And you'll see how this changes Caleb's read. We've got a timing route on this side, an out route over here, and a deep post as an alert should this be uh, open middle of the field and a two shell coverage. And Caleb goes to his first read on the left side, but sees this safety rotate over. He knows he's got open middle of the field and then looks over, the second he sees it, he pulls the trigger and, oh, by the way, remember that arm talent we were talking about? Absolute freaking dot. NFL touchdown. College down at the one-yard line. And what's crazy is they get him on the exact same thing. Literally the same play here, same formation, and same deal where Utah is trying to show some pre-snap confusion. They're actually this time, though, showing um, middle of the field open pre-snap with two deep safeties, showing, you know, probably their cover two, which they ran a lot of in this game, or, you know, potentially cover four. Um, but as I play this right before the snap, Utah's rotating, and Caleb knows this right now, but he doesn't necessarily know what they're rotating into. This initially looks like maybe cover three, but he's going to have to let this play out. But by the time he hits the top of his drop, all he knows is this is middle of the field open because nobody rotated single high. This turned into cover four, and this actually turned into some form of a inverted cover two type of situation. But what Caleb does know is that he's got all this space, which pre-snap was not supposed to be there. And he hits the top of his drop, takes a hitch, and this thing's on the money. He throws it away from the safety, understanding where the leverage of the defense is. And this is just high-level quarterbacking, man. The throw, the read, the decision, the timing, it's all there. Now let's check out the Washington game, and this one really puts the whole thing together. I love this play because this is a total NFL look. This is something Brian Flores would run in Minnesota if uh, Caleb does end up a Chicago Bear. So we've got a full blitz look pre-snap. We've got likely a cover three here with what we talked about earlier, trips formation. Teams are going to treat this part of the field here as the middle of the field as opposed to right here. Caleb thinks these guys are probably going to drop into a cover three, and most blitzes in general are cover three type of blitzes. So I know that's what Caleb is thinking because on this play, they've got an out route. They've got an alert up the seam here. And they've got another kind of timing route on the backside with these guys running little flare checkdowns. And I know that Caleb thinks this is going to be cover three because that's the most likely pre-snap tell here based on what the defense is showing, but also because look where his eyes go as he drops. He's reading that out route. Now, I'll show you what happens here, but I want to rewind in a second. There's a lot going on here, but it's a lot of good stuff. So as Caleb's dropping here, again, his eyes are going over here. He likes this out route look, but as he's dropping, he's got his eyes right here on the safety who he expected again to rotate back into a cover three look. That was the pre-snap tell. Instead, he's rotating down here. And I don't think Caleb knows necessarily what he's running here, but what he does know is that with this safety rotating down, this part of the field is going to be extremely vulnerable. And remember, he knows he's got this guy running this alert. Additionally, he thought this corner right here was going to be in, in a uh, kind of man-to-man -man sort of zone match cover three look right here on his outside receiver running the out route. But instead, he's bailing out deep into this area. Now, the last thing Caleb has to be worried about would be these, these defenders kind of re-entering this middle of the field area. 
in case this was like a buzz defender in a cover three and this guy was actually rotating into a cover three so the processing of this rotational type of zone coverage here is still in process here but Caleb really reads this out with as much urgency and cerebral quarterback ability as you could ask for again passes up on the out route rightfully so takes that hitch steps up and finds that backside defender once he sees that there's no safety threatening that middle of the field he knows he has this and then you can see that arm talent the zip on this ball this is not a dumb quarterback here this is a second read against a really tough coverage to break down um in a, in a big spot too third down third and eight last one smash concept hitch corner hitch corner against a clear pre-snap single high either man-to-man -man or cover three type of look here what caleb does know is he loves this leverage right here with this corner showing press and he's in complete control here we're going to run it. He's going to hold the safety with his eyes, looking right with really no intention of throwing that. But he looks off the safety, holds him, takes his second hitch. The, uh, the arm talent on complete display, not in a velocity type of way, but just a very catchable, perfect placement, back shoulder throw here, trusting the structure on time. You can't ask a NFL quarterback to run this NFL concept any better against this coverage. Now, I'm not trying to say Caleb is some surgeon of a passer or that he doesn't have a lot of room to grow in terms of processing and decision making, just as most young quarterbacks do. But I am saying that there is a fairly strong foundation to build upon here in terms of where Caleb is at with the mental aspect of the position. And I was also super encouraged, by the way, to see him work on a lot of these deficiencies into the second half of the season, where I really thought he took a lot of those really public criticisms from that infamous Notre Dame game and began playing on time and in structure a lot more consistently, though still not perfect. And when you put the entire package together, I just couldn't disagree more with a lot of the comments I've seen out there from people who say, He's got bust written all over him. I've seen that all the time. There's just too much good in his overall scouting profile and not enough weaknesses to make any sort of sound argument that he's just going to get to the NFL and suck. Okay, so Caleb Williams didn't win a second Heisman and carry USC to a national championship and fulfill his destiny as the best prospect since Andrew Luck. Shocker. But I still see a quarterback prospect whose grades stack right behind um, a lot of the top number one picked quarterbacks in recent years. Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, and ahead of guys like Kyler Murray and Bryce Young. And I've seen a lot of NFL fans, I think, lose sight of this, which is why I wanted to make this video. At the end of the day, Caleb Williams is a fantastic quarterback prospect, more than deserving of going number one overall in pretty much any draft. And whoever gets him is, in my opinion, getting a good, if not maybe a little inconsistent starter right away, who, if he can show some development in the way that guys like Mahomes, Lamar, Allen have in recent years, you're talking about a quarterback that could be one of those perennial MVP candidate guys who puts you in a position to win a Super Bowl every single year. Now, I haven't gotten to Drake May yet. I know a lot of people like him, and maybe I like him even more than Caleb Williams. We'll see if that changes this upcoming statement. But I wanted to end the video with this. Whoever has the number one overall pick in April's draft, I think would be making a critical mistake by not drafting Caleb Williams with the number one pick in the draft. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a blast diving into Caleb Williams' tape. Uh, hit that like button, because if this video does well, I'd love to continue making videos in this format. It is a lot of work to do this kind of thing, so uh, show your support, hit that like button. Let's see this video do well, and uh, maybe we'll have one on Drake May within a couple weeks. Um, but if nothing else, really appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you soon. Peace out.